This story happens a few years ago. I'm meeting with Lyle for lunch, and Lyle is high. I don't mean high on drugs. I mean just filled with passion because he's been reading this book, which I love. And if you have not read this book, probably pause what you're doing right now and just go buy it. It's called The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. An amazing book. Anyway, Lyle has read this book and he's come to me and he's filled with passion. He's filled with testimonies and he's talking to me all about, you know, tithing and blessing and extravagance and outrageousness. And Lyle's got this revelation about first fruits, right? And so I'm listening to Lyle and he's talking about it's not enough that we give 10%. It's also important when we give our 10%. Right. And I'm like, what do you mean when we give her 10%? And so he's talking about the whole thing of like, you you need to bring your tithe immediately. It's like the first thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to him and, you know, I'm, I appreciate his passion. And But in my heart, I'm like, well, hang on, what he's saying, I'm running straight into the, the practical reality of the way we tithe. Right. Which was we get paid, like many people in America, on the 1st and the 15th of each month. Yes. And so what we would do is, because on the first, all of our big expenses came yeah, out. Yeah, there was no wiggle room. Like our mortgage and our yeah. car payment and our car insurance, like the big heavy hitter responsibilities, is when we looked at what we had to pay for, we didn't have enough money to tithe on the first, no problem, on the 15th on that paycheck. you do the whole month's we, tithe. We would tithe yeah. on the first and on the 15th. And in my head, I'm thinking, like in terms of... Each month, God's getting all his money. So Lyle's telling me about how important it is to tithe, you know, immediately. And I said, well, Lyle, like, I'm just thinking about what you're saying. And I explained that to him. And I was like, so are you telling me I'm not tithing? He says, not according to the Bible. And I was like, but but God still gets his money. Hey, on the 15th, like, I don't think you understand, Lyle. God still gets all of his money for February on February 15th. And he said, yeah, but for the 1st to the 14th, you're keeping his money in your pocket. And I was like, no, 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 but he still gets all the <laughs> no, money. there's nothing left in our pocket, Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> and Lyle looks at me and he says, Alan, how much faith does it take to pay God last? Oh, harsh. So I punched him. No, I didn't. I, I, was, I was like... Okay. Well, I, I don't think I was okay yet. I think I was just like, oh, he's been a bit religious. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when all is said and done... Each month, God has his money. But he was just like, no, no, it needs to be first. Well, what he said didn't leave me. And I remember coming home, and I remember telling you, and I probably had to pee in my bonnet about it. Listen to what Lyle said, blah, 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 and what do you think? And, and I was like, our budgeting software <laughs> says something different. <laughs> but I had this thought, yeah. and I think we talked about this, is what if the reason that I think I can't afford to tithe is because I'm not tithing properly? Ah. Uh. Because the famous passage in Malachi Mm -hmm. says that, you know, if you tithe, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And Lyle's point was like, I I appreciate that you're giving God his money, but you're not actually exercising faith. Mm. So we talked about it. Do you remember this? Yes. And we were like, oh, okay, let's. Let, I think I'm convicted by it. Mm-hmm. And the conviction was slow. It took a couple of hours, but it was that same day. You and I decided, okay, for the rest of our lives, what we're going to do is as soon as any money comes our way, we're going to tithe on it immediately. Mm. And that means our next paycheck is coming, coming up on the 1st, and we're going to decide to give our tithe. But that also means we can't pay our mortgage. It also means we can't pay these things but we're going to trust God. And I remember thinking, is this wise? Yeah. And I remember the Holy Spirit saying, "Is it? are you asking if it's wise to trust God? And I was like, okay, I realize that's a silly question. So we decided to, yeah. and I don't remember what day it was, but we had a couple of, we had a, maybe a week or so, yeah. maybe 10 days, something like that, before that was going to happen. The day that we decided... The very next day, we got a random check for $20,000. We did? We did. You don't I remember I don't remember that? this. Yeah, because I remember calling Lyle and just saying, Lyle, you're, you're, sit down. You're not going to believe this. And I told him, hey, yes, man, we our did. conversation, now. Thank it's you. so... It so struck me, AJ and I came home, we made this covenant, we're going to do this, and guess what happened? He's like, what? I said, we haven't we haven't even implemented it yet. We just decided we're going to do it. We got a check for $20,000. I remember. He was so excited, and he was hollering. And I would say 
that when we learned to bring the tithe immediately, that was one of the watershed moments in our life when our finances changed. Yeah. Because the truth is we had been tithers. Yes. What I now call we'd been givers of 10% our whole married life. Yeah. But we hadn't seen financial breakthrough for most of our married life. We we saw pockets of it, but we didn't see a consistent change in our finances mm -hmm. until we did that. Mm -hmm. I remember that that stands out as a watershed moment in our in our finances with tithing. Yeah. N not just the amount, but the when. Mm -hmm.